Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. looks like we got our little color coordination going on today huh (laughs) yeah i did who dressed us huh (laughs) (laughs) synchronicity like minds good good strong minds think alike so uh i want to talk to you uh, a little bit about being an author what you're doing in the world you are up in pacifica california still correct i am you're an international best-selling author, you're an intuitive, you're a speaker, you're a coach, and you also told me, I believe, that you broke your neck. When I was 27, I had my spiritual slap and awakening. Wow. Well, let's start there. Brains, oh, I forgot to tell you where you are. You are on the edge with two queens. It is April Mahoney and Sharon Karen. Welcome, Brains, to the place that the conversation is pointed. Guess is sharp, and the responses are never dull. Now back to the story. Tell us all about what happened. Well, when I was 27, uh, I was in I was in an okay place. I after a divorce, married young, divorced, and and dating um, this new gentleman after three years of crying uh, from my divorce and. What ended up happening, he walked into the place where I was with another woman. And whoa, 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 whoa. let me dial back. The new guy walked into the place with another chick. (laughs) And you broke your and you broke your neck? I would have broke their neck. (laughs) Well, here's what happened. I was so I I was so taken aback by it. I left as fast as I could. I didn't say a word to him, got in my car. Not a good thing. To Orange 240Z, got in the car, and I was get going home. A two four, I'm sorry, I had to interject because I remember 240Z. <laughs> Those were the hot rods. They the, were, and I loved mine. the 70s and 80s, yes, ma'am. All right. Yes. And anyway, I should not have done that. I was, I was really upset, crying, got on, you know, got on the freeway, tears streaming down my face, and I don't know what happened exactly if I was just, just so distraught, I passed out or whatever. My car actually did a U-turn over four lanes Ooh. and hit the center divide going the, the opposite direction. Now had, now, had you been drinking a little bit? No, I hadn't. Uh, I had, that was, that yeah. was pure emotion and adrenaline? It, it certainly was. And... I, I was just beside myself. I think after a rough childhood, father left, you know, married young, uh, husband came back from Vietnam, mm. not a good thing. I mean, I was just not in a good place. Uh, and most of the women in my family were victims and they had to have a man. And, and I thought, I'm not going to be like that. And here, like this, I'm repeating this story and I'm like, I'm not doing this. Got, you know, when my car hit the center divide over four lanes, I didn't hit anybody. Nobody hit me. All of a sudden, I'm looking down at my body in the car and and I'm thinking, oh, I guess this is it. It was very peaceful. And I thought, I'm out of here. And then suddenly I saw my chest heaving in the car and I was pulled back into my body. And then I'm like, I'm not done yet. And at that point, I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Because anyway, I, my car wouldn't, was running, but it was stuck in the, onto the center divide. So I went back and forth and back and forth, you know, in the Z and then got the car off and then did another U-turn across four lanes. I didn't hit anybody. Nobody hit me. I mean, it was a miracle. And seriously, by the grace of God, go I. Mm-hmm. because yeah anyway I, I survived that I was three months in a bot in a body cast a green a body you know green body cast looking like a turtle and but I had I, I had the ch- I was alive wow. and there was and so 
life, my whole life changed at that time because before that, life was really tough for me. And I was coming from fear, kind of like everybody in my family. Oh. Well, no more fear because what's the worst thing could, that could happen? Okay, well, I could die. And you know what? That wasn't so bad. So why not start doing everything? I started running and skiing and traveling the world. I went to work wow. for Canadian Airlines and really got deep into understanding that our human bodies are sacred Absolutely. And taking a breath is the best thing that ever happens. I was so well, happy. Well, yes. Is that disrespectful joker? Did he at least come see you in the hospital? No, I think <laughs> no. no. Uh, and it was probably a good thing. Yeah. It was probably a good thing because it was my time. I was learning how to take charge of my inner knowing and my power and not give it away to anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really help people with. And the other thing is I was not in my body when I was a little girl, being in my body was not a safe place to be. Wow. And so I was, you know, all heart. And from here up fourth chakra up, you know, to the seventh kind of floating around. Mm -hmm. We can't, we cannot maintain it. Let me, well, let me dial, let me dial into that just for a minute. Okay. Because at an early age, you had dis-ease. You had discomfort with your body. Um, and I don't know if that's, you know, your, your physical body, how you looked or, you know, were you traumatized? Um, were you bullied? Were you, it's just something about you that just said, this is not, this is not the body for me. You were shamed. Go into that a little bit more when you say so, you weren't in your body. No, I loved my body. What happened was when I was little, my mother and father, my father was Jewish. My mother was Lutheran. They never got along religiously and they never got along at all. And they, they were screaming and yelling at each other all the time. So I would have hold my little sister in the corner to try to disappear because it was so devastating. And then kind of just always waiting for the next shoe to drop. And then what happened was my father left when I was 11. And that was a good thing for me because the fighting stopped. However, my mother and my sister never got over it. And I, so I was supporting them and kind, kind of all of that thing. So when I say, you know, I wasn't safe to be in my body, I was trying to disappear out of that, the conflict and the constant fighting and the anger and, and all, all of that. So wow. I did, I really did the best I could. And the, and the great thing was, was I was actually able to help my little sister and my mother and even my father i love my father but they just didn't get along and so sometimes life i believe i i got so tough from all of that that that's why after you know after i my car spun out that i was back in my body and i made I made that promise to myself, never again will I give my power away, never again will I be afraid of anything because there's nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here in a, in a physical body right. and we didn't make our body mm -hmm. and we don't even breathe ourselves. No, so who does that? You God. know, that absolutely God, creator, source, higher power, whatever name you want to use. And that's the beauty of it. And that I was so on purpose, you know, from that point on, because I knew and I, you know, I knew that there was like the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you a question about knowing, because I know a lot of stuff. And I was talking to my mentor yesterday. I was driving in the car and I was in a quandary. And she said, you are experiencing what you are experiencing because of a past experience. So I was reliving an experience. I'm going through something that I had been through previously before. Yes. And I had a lot of negative self-talk about, oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. It's going to happen. And she said, you know what? What you are not allowing yourself to do is to live a new experience 
and to reframe it and to reshape it. And now that you have the tools of NLP and talking to your subconscious mind and meditation and self-love and self-worth, all that, she says, you're painting a, a brand new picture. You have a blank canvas. So why are you stuck in that? And that's what people get stuck in, Sharon, Karen, is they think they know, but you don't know the next situation. Well, we have a deeper knowing, and that's where where my work, that's where I come in, because I do the same thing with my clients. We repattern the subconscious mind, we write our vision for a life we love living, all of that. And what how I help people that's different is through the Akashic records. You know, I'm a spiritual intuitive Akashic master and guide and coach is what we do, how we balance our physical body is through our spiritual, uh, our, our spiritual nature. You know, our spiritual practice, that's what balances us in the physical. And I, and I kind of did it separate when I was little because I was out there a, a mystic at heart for, from the time I was born. Wow. But, but yet I didn't feel safe in my body. And that's the deal. We cannot maintain our human body if we're not in it. And if we're not living with ease, we right. create dis-ease. Right. And so it's just all of that. It's really understanding about how we put all of that together. And then we live from that most powerful place that our connection with the infinite side of ourselves. Yeah. We all we are born with everything that we needed, only we forget. So I have a little mantra that I love to use, and it's called breathe, ground, and remember. Mm. And so we take, a, you know, we can kind of just do it here quickly. Okay. We take a deep breath in all the, and from our nose, breathe in through your nose, bring it down into your belly very slowly. And now out even slower, like you're blowing through a straw. Breathe in again. And now out even slower, send that breath down your thighs, past your knees, into your calves, past your ankles and into the bottom of your feet. We breathe in the sacred breath. We send it down into our feet. We are safe. This slows down our nervous system and we are connected. We're connected to Gaia, the mother earth on the planet. And we have gravity and we can't float away. Even though I tried when I was little, you know, right, I, couldn't, right. I couldn't get away. And the beauty of it is being powerful in that place. So turn my brains on to the Akashic Records. I'm pretty familiar. I've had other guests on my show that have talked about them. But what's been your experience in actually looking at your life's chronicle? Well, and beyond your life's chronicle, life's chronicles. Well, it's everything. The uh, Akashic Records are, are past, present, and future. Past is history. Present is being in this present moment. And I don't do future with people because I coach everyone to create their new life by visioning and getting rid of this, the, the old story from the subconscious mind. But the Akashic Records is everything. We come from the other dimension. We come from the sticky thought substance. Everything is there. Universal spirituality. Wait, 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 wait. You, you, wait. Hold on. You used a term I like. The sticky thought. What is it? Sticky thought? The substance. The sticky thought. thought. Substance. Okay. That's so, okay, so I get it. I get it. That's, that's, yeah. I like that. That's where everything comes from. It's quantum physics. It's mm -hmm. the other dimension. It's where we all began. Our soul sparked mm -hmm. there. And we sparked from that substance that is there. And we're all connected. To, and we're all the same. We're, and we're unique souls. But everything is one. We are all one. Mm. I love that. Reminds me of a Frankie Beverly song. We are one. I, I'm <laughs> but I love it. Exactly. But, um, what I was going to ask you something else too. Okay. So now you're at this place. 
You have the ultimate awakening. You are charged. You are on fire. But people are looking at you with a side eye. They're like, okay, what is she doing? Is she, you know, having a little too many cocktails at lunch? You know, people are afraid of uncovering, and ha or should I say, having the covers pulled off of you. Okay? They don't know where to begin, and they are, you know, they're apprehensive of the truth. What do you tell that person? I tell that person that you are powerful beyond measure. Mm. You are a luminous light being, powerful beyond measure. We all come in the same. We all come in with that power. Only what happens usually from childhood or life, if we don't maybe have parents that are supportive or don't know how to do that, and then people forget. That's the breathe, ground, and the remember part is that we're all these powerful luminous light beings having an earth experience in this earth suit. Mm. And we're really the we're uh, really earth suit or, or, meat, or a meat suit. <laughs> Well, I, I call it the earth suit and we all have our, our, you know, we look at each other in, in our suits. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you meet someone brains, I'm going to tell you nine times out of 10 and nine times out of 10, you're meeting their representative. You're not meeting their true authentic self. People don't, I don't do that. When I first introduced myself in a, a, a public setting or whatever, I'm a little standoffish because I'm observing. I want to see where I need to meet you. Because I meet people where they're at. I don't try to come pompous and arrogant, but I don't try to come slow and sluggish either. Well, I just kind of sit back and just kind of observe and listen and let them talk and then color in the white space. Yes. And we all have the, the most beautiful part of our physical body is our heart. Mm -hmm. And when we come with that high frequency love energy from the heart, and of course the heart is the seat of the soul. So it's that connection. You know, I don't worry about what people say about me anymore. I could really care less because I know who I am. And when I come from love energy with everyone, everyone's always doing the best that they can with what they have. And I know that. And I live that because I know that that's what I'm doing. Because it all starts with me. It right. all starts with, with me loving myself, taking care of myself, understanding the rest of the story from the Akashic record, because all the rest of the story for each and every one of us is in your record. And that's what I use as a system where I actually sit down, do three sheets of information to, to tell you what your soul wants you to know right now. Oh, that's okay. what I do with people. And I don't tell you anything that you don't already know because it's all about you. It's right. an affirmation. So you use the word affirmation. Give us a couple great affirmations. Uh, I have one and mantras. One is that how can it get any better than this? <laughs> and what else is possible? What else is out there for me? How do I prepare and receive? I am worthy. I am love. I am strong. I am powerful. I'm a brain. I tell myself that all the time. <laughs> yes. What are some of your affirmations that you use and you share with your clients? I am that I am. Mm. The I am is who we are on the soul level, and we have the God source within us. Mm. So when we say I am that I am, that means that that source, the God source is within me. And the I am is what we put a stake in the ground. And we, we are here in this earth suit, in this earth experience, and we are here on the earth. So we claim, we claim our power, the luminous light being powerful beyond measure. Uh, I, I love saying that to myself because when I say that, uh, I, I feel expansive. Mm. And it, it encompasses all that is our connection, our power, and that not to 
take life so seriously because we're all here doing, you know, whatever it is we've come to do and hopefully with more intention. So just affirming who we already are. Mm, that's huge. That's Standing in the power. Right. And, and love who you are, brains. Because you know what? You can't be somebody else. I don't care what you try. Cosmetic surgery, <laughs> dating their husband, wearing their clothes. You will never be somebody outside of who you are designed and meant to be. So that's stamped in stone. Tell us a little bit about your book, Sharon. Yes, I would love to. I'll tell you, it was one of the most healing experiences that I have ever had in my life, you know, aside from the broken neck. Mm. And, and writing my chapter was I actually, from the beginning to the end, the little bit of the story that you heard is what I wrote about. And then I wrote about ways uh, also in my chapter, uh, ways to be all that we can be, how to connect with the infinite side of ourselves using the pendulum, the breathe, ground, and remember. I have all those little tips in there. But the book is called Break Free uh, to Peace, Love, and Unity. And it's an anthology. And I uh, my- with you? Yes, I do. Let's see it. Yeah, hold it up. Yeah, wait, hold on. Let me get you a full, as they say, a full frontal. Okay. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, it's got a little glare on it. Move it over a little bit to the left. There you go. I want people to be able to recognize it. And that can be purchased on Amazon. Yes. Okay. Yes. And my chapter is um, Raise Your Frequency, Change Your Life. Wow. Everything is energy. Like I said, everything comes from the same place, the sticky thought substance. You know, everything is, is energy. That's and when right. we realize that all we have to do, if we feel our, our, we have an emotional body that tells us whether we're feeling expansive or contractive. So our emotional body, if we're feeling contractive, there's little to no energy coming into our physical body and the physical body can't live with ease. Mm. However, when we get feeling expansive, I always say, what would I love? What would I love? What would I love? Because when I say the, the love word, and that's like 500 on the map of consciousness of frequency, that's where we want to be. All, all of the energy from the God source when we're accepting it is coming in. So it's raising our frequency and understanding that everything is energy is the most important part other than claiming our power. That's Those nice. two things, if I could tell you, that is really the rest of the, of the story that's going to take us to where we want to go. Well, you know what? We want to get to our Zenith Point Brains. And the great start is to give Sharon Karen a call. Okay. Reach out to her. Go, you know, explore her on the web. Make sure that it's your shoe size and it fits. And if not, you know, she's a great resource to help, you know, help you find your way. Maybe give you some consultation. But it's so important to try to uncover and discover who we are. Because, you know, you don't want to get to your next destination and you don't know what's going on. (laughs) I have, a, I have a free gift for all your listeners. You got to call them brains. Oh, all the brains. Uh, <laughs> all right. What so do you we're, want? We're a brain having, having a loving experience, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so on my website, it's just www.sharonkaren.com, S-H-A-R-O-N-C-A-R-E-N. When you go to my website, there is a downloadable button up at the top that says free chakra guide. It's the most comprehensive document. I use it with all my coaching clients. I want to give it to you to you and you and your brains and 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 you'll be delighted because that's how I learned how to ground this document is very comprehensive so I hope that you'll do that download it's free and if you have any questions you can reach out to me well reach out to her and embrace her and love her because you know what she recovered from a broken neck brains folks don't do that and then uh recover from a broken heart and look at her. And now she is just sharing the sticky brain substance with all of us. I love that. I love that. Because, again, you think of your brain, it is a sticky substance. 
<laughs> it really is. So exactly. thank you so much, Brains. I need you to handle your business. I need to handle mine and turn my card over, right? Exactly. I need you to go love, like, share. Right here, you see it. It's in your face. Love, like, share. Leave a comment. Okay? Good, bad, or indifferent. That's the only way that we are going to evolve. That's the only way that we are going to be able to cultivate our message that it resonates with your heart. Because we're doing it not for us. We got it. We're trying to up-level you, okay? So respect that. Love, like, and share. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you for being with me on the edge. You're the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me, my dear. I, I loved it. All right. We'll talk again soon. Brains, okay? Get it together. We're trying. One thing at a time.